Hello and welcome to this daily devotional from Christ Church Chorleywood. My name is Michelle McHale and the verses we are thinking about today are from Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. I wonder, as you go through each day, do you think more about what you are doing than how you are doing things? I confess that I get very engrossed in what I'm doing, rather than asking, Am I doing this in a way that pleases and glorifies God? Am I doing this for him or for me? We can often think that our lives are insignificant and we are tempted to strive to make them feel more important by being busy, doing lots of important things, distracting ourselves and not really thinking about what matters most. It's the way of the world and is a trap that never brings true peace nor contentment. Our God is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Everything exists for his glory. Colossians 1.16 says of Christ that all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. God's desire is for us to live in relationship with him and he really is interested in the tiny details of how we live our lives. Over and over again, the Bible reveals a God who cares about the quiet attitude of our minds and hearts. Remember Jesus' condemnation of the Pharisees who outwardly appeared holy and righteous, but inwardly were the exact opposite. And reflecting on this passage, this is what I find the verses are saying to me. To focus on the how we live our lives rather than what our lives consist of. God invites us to live for him and to dedicate everything we think, do and experience to him. So whether the work of our hands is paid or unpaid, categorised by people as important or unimportant, it all matters to God. Perhaps right now you feel really trapped because of the pandemic. And also because although there are many things we can change in our lives, there's also a lot that we can't change. Sooner or later, we all have burdens and troubles that are inescapable and unchangeable. And maybe it feels overwhelming to change our attitude regarding all that we do and think. But actually, and I know from personal experience, that when we take the first steps towards change, with God's help, this transformation of our hearts doing every task as an expression of worship to him, life actually feels lighter and freer. And so often this is the way with the things of God. At first, what he asks us to do seems too hard. But when we submit to him, ask for his help, and daily seek to live as he teaches us to, life is better, even when the circumstances remain the same. So how do we move towards this transformation? The first step is being honest about our attitude to the things we've been given to do, our responsibilities. Does our attitude put the glory of God before all things? Do we realise we really can serve him in the small, unseen moments? When we recognise our need to change our thinking and that we need his help to do this, remember that Jesus encourages us to ask, in his name, according to his will, and he promises that we will receive what we ask for. And because God commands us to live for him, we can confidently approach him for his help, knowing that he will give us the strength and wisdom to live in this way. But we need to keep asking daily, even hourly, being persistent and determined in our endeavours. And as you begin to grasp and practice this, doing all things to the best of your abilities with his help, 
I wonder when you will start to see that the daily routine becomes holy, a sacred offering to God. So today, let's honestly examine our motivations, thoughts and attitudes. Let us humbly approach the throne of grace to ask for our Lord's help in transforming our hearts and minds, to be motivated to do all things for him and for his glory, however big or small the task or moment. And finally, I'd like to read the passage again, but this time from the message version of the Bible. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And so let's just close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the big and the small moments of life, I pray that you would give us all the wisdom, the courage, the strength and the determination to live for you in all that we do and in all that we are. And I pray this for your glory. Amen.